explain to people the impact, you know, because I, I, I've only talked to, you know, just two or three of uh, friends of mine and, and one of them, you know, she was a girl and, you know, she had really kind of said some things that, that I, I just wasn't really prepared to hear in terms of, you know, you need to kind of just move on and get over it and get through it. And I'm trying to, I'm looking at her like, you know, what, are you serious? Like I, I, you know, I, you, how, how can you pretend to understand what, 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 what goes on and in, in, with my emotions and in, in, in my psyche. And, and so it, it is very difficult even to open up because you don't know what's, what the response is going to be. Have, have you, have you had to... therapy too? No, not yet. But I, 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 I'm finally at the point now where I know that I need to, because I'm never going to be able to get past this and, and, do the things that I need to do it you know it, if I don't because if if I don't I I, I this is gonna, just going to stick with me and I'm never going to get past it and, yeah. and yeah. I, you know it's like it's just a you know you talk about you know a hole in the heart or you know right. ripping your you know like a piece of you is missing and, yeah. and it's yeah. very especially you know from being you know a male you know a straight male you know my first, you know, sexual experience was with members of of the same sex. So that's really that's really screws yeah, with yeah. your mindset as well. So it, it's it's this conversation, you know, that we're finally having, you know, with the wake of the Me Too and you know the the nomination process of Kavanaugh. I mean, it, it I guess it does give me some hope from that standpoint that that there are more more men than you would think and you know we carry this with us and 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 it's it's a burden man it's it's yeah i know i know i, I hate to rush gentlemen Brittany. When... I, I just want to say first of all that i'm so amazed by all three of the men who were brave enough to share their their stories and this is for you nate and anyone else listening that needs a resource mm-hmm. if you have experienced uh sexual violence assault uh, Rain is a fantastic organization that can give you support in themselves or direct you to where you can go um, to get additional support. Uh, Rain.org, R A I N N.org, or 1 800 656 HOPE is their hotline. So, and you can always reach out to someone here on the Make It Plain team and we will help you find a resource as well. Appreciate um, that. Folks, I'm in Make It Plain Mail, M A I L Gmail dot com. I want to thank you all for your courage. We've been hearing from women, sexual assault survivors. The first men to call uh, happening this morning, Todd in Indiana, uh, who was raped by a cousin when he was 10 or 11, Joe in Kentucky, um, a victim of a gang rape in the military, uh, Nate in Michigan, uh, also a victim. I, I mean, it was three people, so that's a gang as well, Nate, as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the more men that tell these stories and relate their experiences, the more other men who are not sensitized can become sensitized, I think. Uh, gentlemen, thank you all. Praying for you. I'm with you. Call me anytime, and we're available for you, okay? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for your courage and uh, for your strength, uh, Nate and uh, Joe and um, Todd. Wow. Okay. All right. Getting a lot done this morning. So as promised uh, in uh, studio here with us and folks, we're on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube right uh, right now. Uh, make it plain also on Instagram. Um, minister with two T's. Very special guest. Appreciate him uh, making the trip in early on this uh, Wednesday morning in traffic and no less to come into the studio. Uh, Rob Goldstone is here. Rob, how are you, man? Good morning to Good you. To the see Lincoln you. Tunnel strikes again. I know that's right. Well, and it, we got you in under the wire because you told me you're headed back home across the pond, aren't you? I'm heading back next week. I'm so, still here. Okay. So how long how, how long are you going to be home? Is it just a visit or what? No, no. I've lived here in the States for 20 years. I just go so, on and off. I go back to London. You're going back to London to visit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You still have family there? I do. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Glad you glad you came in. It, just kind of segue from what we've been talking about. We, obviously, Kavanaugh's in the news. We've been talking about uh, um, sexual misconduct and what have you. Uh, I read that, uh, and, and you... Uh, I think everybody knows uh, have been a representative uh, primarily of uh, Eamon Agalarov, the uh, musician. Uh, is it true? I read that in the initial meeting between Eamon and Trump in the whole conversation about the Miss Universe pageant, Trump made a bit 
or tried to make a bet. Is that accurate? I, I think, are you, um, it depends. Are we talking about the thing he, tell me what, what you, well, he wanted, book, he, took, he, he wanted to make a bet about how many right. women. Right. It, it was, it, it was at, um, it was at a dinner and, uh, we were in Las Vegas. Okay. It right, was the okay. first time that, uh, the Aguilaros would meet with the Trumps, um, but, and with the Trumps would actually be with Donald Trump. And during the dinner, you know, everybody, when you're trying to break the ice, is trying to bond in some way. You and I will bond, you know, we'll say something. <laughs> right. So Donald Trump's way of bonding was to suddenly say, out of the blue, very loudly, Emin, I'll take $1 million off the cost of the fee to stage Miss Universe if you tell me if you've ever slept with any of the contestants. And he did like a big laugh and people left and Emmons not like a wallflower so I was like oh this will be interesting and Emmons shot back straight away and went that's very interesting Mr. Trump I'll add five million dollars to the cost of the fee to stage the contest if you tell me if you've ever slept with any contestants wow and Trump so everybody laughed because it was obviously said in jest mm -hmm. but and then Trump goes should we just forget the bet <laughs> but it was all said loudly. Now, some people have said to me, was that a bit creepy? Was that a bit odd? If it had been said like a like a whisper, it would have been. But it was obviously intended as a kind of ice-breaking joke. It was his attempt at humor. Yeah, yeah. But but it doesn't sit well no. with where we are today. No, I understand that. Yeah, I mean, and, and obviously in poor taste. But now, let me ask you this: you you or you helped to organize Miss Universe Pad. That was in 20... 2013. It seems like an eternity. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, you know, there were rumors about you know what Trump had done at pageants around women. Did you ever witness anything like that? Nothing. Well, first of all, I, first of all, I wasn't really involved on the pageant side. Okay. So so to put this it in perspective, nice. uh, my con my client, Emin, um, we were in with Miss Universe to actually find a co-star for a video. And because he owns a bunch of things in Russia, he owns venues, he owns uh, uh, shopping malls and things, he suddenly said, well, why don't we stage it? Meaning him, not me. Why don't we stage it in Moscow? Uh -huh. And so by default, I suddenly became one of the organizers, the coordinators of the contest. I never saw anything because, to be honest, when I've only witnessed Donald Trump at two pageants, Miss USA in Vegas, where I didn't know him at all at that stage, so I wasn't hanging around him, and in Moscow, where I just had him at press events. I was mainly doing publicity and marketing, so nothing. But I mean, it's not surprising to me that people would say all kinds of stuff because they're beauty mm -hmm. pageants, which I have to say are not necessarily all that popular in today's, you know. You, uh, Rob Goldstone with us, folks, 25 minutes before the hour, you um, set up the infamous Trump Tower meeting. That's now what you are known for more than anything for my else. Sons, yeah. um, you said recently you regret doing that now. This is what I've said. So I sent the email that was the spark that got the call between Emin and Don Jr. that resulted in that meeting at Trump Tower. And um, I thought long and hard about it. When I wrote my book, um, I knew that I would be asked, do you regret this? And, and, and my answer has always been the same, which is knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. not what I knew then, but what I know now, you know, the lawyer involved, who was supposedly some random private attorney, has said publicly that she's an informant, whatever that means. And all kinds of people have said all kinds of things. I wouldn't send that. You wouldn't do it. With the knowledge that I have now. It, 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 did, it didn't cross your mind at the time, what just even what that looked like, sending an email that... Um, appeared to be or seemingly was on behalf of foreigners, perhaps even a foreign government, uh, 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 indirectly to gather dirt on another candidate? I, I get how that looks. The optics of it are horrible. I think part of that is that I'm a foreigner to some extent. Uh, so okay. to me, you know, if I'd grown right. up and maybe it was instilled in me, you know, I don't mean right from wrong, but to me, I didn't really know what I was talking about. I was interpreting what my client was telling me, which was very vague, but to the point. 
And I thought if I could just get him and Don Jr. on the phone, which I did, it didn't matter what I said, really. I just had to get Don Jr.'s attention. I'm a publicist, so for years, I puff up things. You know, if I if I sent you a pitch and said, I have someone to do your show, I don't really know who they are or what they are, but they have something that could be interesting. Well, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even answer me, because I wouldn't answer me. <laughs> but, but my point is, I'd been told various pieces of this information of the email. I just puffed it up like a publicist to do- Like you say, a crown prosecutor. Well, that's an English expression. That caused right, the media right, right. to lose their minds. Right. So in England- That was all, puffing. Not only that wasn't puffing. What was, that was was she was a uh, a former uh, federal prosecutor. Oh, I see. Okay. I call federal call crown, prosecutors okay. crown because in England they work for the crown. Now I understand I'm not in England, and and yeah. hindsight is fabulous. But what I will say is, if I'd been sending an email to the son of the president of the United States, I probably would have spent more than two or three minutes on it. I was sending an email to get someone's attention to someone whose father was a reality TV star, a huge businessman who was running for president and who most people believe that you or I had more chance of becoming the occupant of the White House. You believe, do you believe that Donald Trump senior knew about the meeting? I don't know that. Um, I know you don't know, but do, what do you believe? What do I think? I, I think this, I can only bring it back to, to myself and to, and to human nature, which is, if my if I was taking a meeting, uh, sort of on behalf of my father in my conference room that he owned in his building with his name on it, with his son-in-law, and with the chairman of his campaign, I would tell my father. Mm -hmm. But he's not my father, so I don't know. But human nature would say to me, I think you'd probably say something. Were you asked anything like that in the grand jury? I wasn't asked that because one of the things that um, is kind of instilled in you by the people asking the questions is that they're not out to have you speculate or to have true, opinion. Yeah. True. So what was very interesting for me, having been a journalist, I used to be a radio presenter in England, was to not speculate and do that. And maybe that's why I sound a little bit guarded even when I give answers now, mm -hmm. because they don't want your, your opinion. They don't want your speculation. They just want your facts. It's a bit like when you look at what's happening with the Kavanaugh uh, hearings. What the FBI, I'm sure, are doing is similar to what happened with me. They just want facts. They're not mm -hmm. out what you think, who did, he did, she did. It's not about that. So it, they didn't ask me that, no. Were you aware of this family's, Eamon's parents and what have you, their relationship to Putin and, and how high up they are on the, the totem pole? So I always, um, I always was curious about that myself. I mean, as well as, um, you know, I was the music manager for Emin, so I had nothing else to do with on the business side. But I knew that his family were oligarchs, for want of a better word. Right. What was interesting was when we first met Donald Trump in Vegas, um, and it's been widely quoted over many years, he announced them by saying, look, the richest man in Russia has come to meet me. Well, at the time, his father was the 54th richest man in Russia, according to Forbes. Mm -hmm. But that didn't seem to bother Donald Trump. You know, it's another of amazing, the best, the biggest, the finest. <laughs> yeah, 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 and I yeah. think he liked the idea of saying they were the number one because it, it bolstered his ego as much as, as giving them some praise. But, um, you know, Emin's father, on the few occasions that it ever came up, and usually it was while journalists were interviewing him, he would always be fiercely independent of his relationship um, with the government, saying that, you know, he's not one of the oligarchs who was given a state-owned company. He, you know, he got his start by selling bootleg videos and DVDs on the black market. So he kind of, he kind of was, I don't know if it's true, but he kind of was fiercely proud of his independence away from the government. Do you believe that Russia had a disproportionate influence on Donald Trump's election now? So I think that if I'm being honest, there are people way above my, my pay grade and my intellect to some extent who are currently investigating that, you know, Bob Mueller and his team and, and the congressional inquiries. But if, if the um, intelligence communities are to be believed, 
then there was definitely some kind of interference. I just always want to put in, in perspective what I believe, which was that my email and the meeting that transpired after that, I've always believed was a very small part of a jigsaw puzzle that is Russiagate. The difference is that maybe because of the clarity in which I wrote that email and the fact that I, I and, and actually everybody else involved have never denied the meeting took place once it came to light and have talked about what happened inside it, it's the clearest part of it for people to see. But I do believe that ultimately it's a very, very small part of what is a very complicated puzzle. Um, Rob Goldstone uh, with his folks. Um, you, are, are you in danger at all, do you think? It's an interesting question. So I'll ask you a question. When you say danger, danger from where? Well, Who, I mean, I mean you're, you're exposing oligarchs related to Putin, um, exposing one who is president who has been called um, a, an unwitting agent, at least, of Putin, you know, and... I'm be honest, Putin is, you know, checking folk out. So um, how I would answer that is that whilst the media and, and people and the public speculated wildly about my role in this, which, I, you know, I like to say, I'm making it very simplistic, was as a publicist who puffed an email, um, I always believed that there was no danger the way you're speaking about for one very good reason. If we're to believe that people like the CIA, the FBI, the KGB, which is now called the FSB in Russia, really know their job, well, they're the very people that know that I'm a publicist who sent an email. I have no connection to the government. I have no connection to Putin. So they, more than anybody, should know that. If they do their job. It's the public and the media that, that like this idea of who is this crazy English person that wears mm -hmm. funny hats? Mm -hmm. Is he Putin's puppet? Is he a spy? That... But as it went along and the story transpired, that changed a bit and people realized that, you know, I, I was, it was the perfect storm. You know, we'd met the Trumps. My client had this connection uh, above and beyond being in the music business. And so I was the intermediary, but I'd always been that. that. It doesn't surprise me. What surprised me is that my client would waste what I saw as a favor with the Trumps for some random attorney that apparently they knew very little about. Right, and she didn't really produce what? Well, if, if, again, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the smartest cookie around, but if, if I, I'm smart enough to know that she definitely produced very generic I called it inane nonsense. <laughs> and I know that because when she was saying, yeah, and Russians support the Democrats and how awful it was. And I looked over at Don Jr. and I thought, didn't your father used to support the Democrats also? Yeah. That was my initial thing was, didn't he used to fund the Democrats? Why would anyone yeah. care about this? So she produced nothing, which is actually a good thing. Uh, lastly, you confirmed a part of the Steele dossier. You believe that Trump stayed at the Moscow Ritz, Carl? That I definitely believe. Um, I believe it because that's where I had him booked. That's where he was dropped off that night. And at 7 the next morning, he came and did a music video in that hotel for Emin. He's actually in Emin's music video. Right. So, you know, I have said, and, and I know it sounds glib or flippant, but I'll say it again. Could he have been whisked away in the middle of the night on a magic carpet? Sure. But do I think he did? No. I think he was probably sleeping at the Ritz-Carlton in the suite that was booked for him. I have no reason to think otherwise, because our security detail that was with him all the time, I would have known about that. People tell you things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's the same with those rumors about what may or may not have happened during that night. Mm -hmm. People talk, they gossip, they speak, and it's odd that I never heard anything about it. Um, I know I said last year, but just, just um, oh, one more. What do you predict? You remember for the grand jury, is the jig up? Is Donald Trump in serious trouble? Is there a hammer that's going to drop? I doubt the grand jury was like that meeting. It was not in any nonsense. Right? That wasn't in any nonsense. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting that they, they will have sat now for, I don't know, it must be heading up to 18 months or something uh -huh. like that. 
so it would be interesting. I'm sure that they're not spending 18 months, obviously, on, on what I'm involved in. I don't know the answer to that, but I would expect that if, if the way in which the Mueller team conducted themselves when I was interviewed, they're very thorough, they're very logical, and I'm sure there are lots of strands to this story. As to whether the gig's up, I don't know, because again, and, I, and I'll just put it down to the fact that I didn't grow up here, I don't know all of the nuances of mm -hmm. politics and all mm -hmm. of that, but it's it's not a great place to be, it's not a great position to be in, I would imagine, if you're the president and you're being investigated day in and day out, it's not it's not a great place to sit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you going, when you leaving for I'm home? next week. Okay, cool. Thank you for coming in, man. Thank you, and again, we, apologies. If anyone's going through the Holland Tunnel, forget it. <laughs> no problem at all. The we Lincoln Tunnel, forget it. Go through the we, Holland we Tunnel. We appreciate you taking the time to come in. Uh, Rob Goldstone, uh, folks, safe travels, and, and let's keep in touch. Absolutely. All right, Take we may call pleasure. on you again as, as, this, as this develops. All right, folks, uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come right back. Sirius X in progress, Resistance Radio, Get Woke and Vote with Draw Kavanaugh. This is MIP. From Russia, we're... 